I picked up Secret Life, um, a graphic novel adaptation by Theo Ellsworth, based on a short story by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, I was introduced to Ellsworth's art uh, through the cover of the anthology 3T. I thought he did a really unusual, beautiful cover. And so that got him on my radar. And then I saw that this book was coming out. So when it came out, I made sure to pick it up. And as part of the promotion, the publisher Drawn and Corley had, if you purchased this from an independent bookstore and you uploaded the copy receipt along with filling out a simple Google Docs form, they would send you a signed book plate by both Ellsworth and Vandermeer. And I got mine Friday, a couple days ago. And, you know, the book didn't come with this. It came and I took it off and I, you know, adhered it to the book. But it's signed by both Theo Ellsworth and Jeff Vandermeer. And it's just nice, cool bookmark. And it's not the same image here, but it's all it's very similar. I thought, I, I kind of liked how this one's, he's smaller in this forest. And then here he's large in the forest, but the book does not come with the book plate. Um, you have to do that promotion through Duarte and Corley. And they were very good about sending it out quickly. So the book Secret Life is a book that I'll probably read again. Um, but first, I just want to comment on the artwork. I mean, all this intricate line work here, all, all this work to me is just amazing. The stars, these dots, um, the trees and the forest and then just the people. And the art is stylized, but it fits the narrative of the story. And the story essentially, well, not essentially, it focuses in an office building in a city. And the book is a series of, starts off a series of small vignettes of what appear to be unrelated characters. But then later on, you see how they all relate and the narrative combines into one really nice cohesive narrative ends really well. And as I mentioned, the main character really is the people in the building. And I've worked in office buildings most of my life. And office buildings have, depending on the company and the culture, they have their own unique, weird rules and cultural norms that wouldn't exist in a lot of places outside an office building. And based on those norms, there's a certain way people behave. And there's certain weird unspoken rules that you just sometimes find out the hard way. Like, for instance, they talk about how the building had five floors and four floors were open to all, but no one could visit the fifth floor without a special key. That's like the C-suite where, you know, your upper level management works. And then you have different types of elevators and which ones they use. And it introduces all these people. And you'll see where this one guy, as one story about this one guy, he attributes all his success to using a certain pen. And then he can't locate the pen and he's freaking out. It's like, instead of like believing yourself and your talent, you're, you're putting that into some kind of physical object, which is strange. But there is that fear sometimes that people have or superstition of sometimes, oh, I'm successful because of this instead of what's inside. Uh, some of the characters are the custodian crew, which are in the basement. I just look at all this, this detail work. It's just so amazing to me. And so, I mean, here on the, on the, on the roof, you have two executives physically fighting, which to, I'm sure has happened in real life, but it's also something that to me is an allegory of, um, I would say executives in the same place competing each other tooth and nail just to be successful instead of working together. And again, there's all these vignettes and then they introduce this character and they don't, none of these characters are named. They're just the custodian or this woman or that woman. And she brings in a vine that she gets from the forest. She takes care of it, nurtures it, and then it starts growing. And it starts growing and growing to the point where she's either got to cut it or let it grow. And she decides to open up one of these ceiling vents and let it just grow. And this becomes, the vine becomes, to me, it's a, this is an allegory of how unnatural an office building location can be, how 
stifling the culture can be where you can't just be a human being. And this is sort of like nature trying to overcome that, which is unnatural. The, the, you know, like for instance, this person dies and he dies behind a desk and he's got like a little bed and a bottle of booze behind his desk. He's just literally living there and dying there. And again, this is like an analogy of people that just work all the time. And sometimes, you know, these people die in early death because they're just so consumed with work and the stress that their bodies can't handle it. Again, that's my interpretation. It's not what they say in the book. There's a lot of allegories and interpretation and, and, and things that if you've worked in an office building, you would know, or you would get a sense of that feeling of almost claustrophobia. And then later on as the book goes, the vine grows and starts with this title or this chapter infiltration and it grows and it grows and it, and also you have here the shadow cabinet this is um every second week of the month the shadow cabinet comes to the fifth floor and that's that fifth floor that you get a special pass to and so like they, they have these weird skull masks that they wear and then this woman who's like an executive assistant comes in and they're all gone so you don't know if they just disappeared or what happened to them. And again, it's just this very strange type of like ritual. Like they come every second week. And one day she spots this weird creature. I'm not sure what the allegory for that one is. But then the vine keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and infiltrates the building. And eventually, not to give a lot of specifics away, but the impact of that vine growing throughout the building on the inhabitants, including the workers, including the mice, um, including everyone there seems to basically overcome that very unnatural state of the building. Um, this is something that a lot of people haven't had to deal with because of the pandemic or the last 18 months, but anyone that's worked in an office building knows exactly that feeling and it does a really good job of just giving that sense of claustrophobia that sense of not being able to be yourself of an unnatural state and again it's i mean this line work is just wonderful it's a very interesting read and there is closure on some of the of the uh, of a lot of the characters again it starts off as like these series of what appear to be unrelated vignettes but then it all combines together and then there is closure for a lot of it it's a really great read this is one of my favorite books that came out this year um i recommend it if the art seems like something that I mean, it's just just this work it's just amazing to me it's just really very good you may want to pick this up um, I follow Theo Ellsworth on his Instagram. He's always posting images. He does other work. He um, has a very unique style and a pretty talented guy. So that's really it. Uh, I like this a lot. This was a great pickup for me. And, you know, I'm glad I did it. And again, this is why I always say read anthologies because you're not going to like everything. But if you find one, two, three, four creators who you really like, then it just makes you want to explore more comics, different comics. Like I probably would have never picked this up had I not known about Theo Ellsworth. I said, oh, it looks kind of cool, but I already liked his art and followed him on my Instagram. So I was really looking forward to this. So that's why I say try to read them because if you find just a couple of new creators that you like, that's what keeps the comics fresh. It, reading the same thing over and over by the same creators is like listening to the same records over and over. It just gets old and boring and then you just stop growing. Anyway, thanks.